years ago, when I was a, a young art student, I had a um, art history class that, that met at 8 o'clock in the morning, Monday morning. And the professor talked in a very low, monotone voice. And the slides we looked at were black and white slides of Greek ruins, and they had never been cleaned in 35 years. <laughs> well, by the time 9.30 rolled around, I was asleep. And I swore from that point on I would never try to put an audience to sleep again. So my, my slides will be fairly brief and to the point. Uh, I'm going to show you a sampling of work that spans about 30, 35 years. Um, people have asked me, well, are you a sculptor painter? Well, I, I'm, I use the term visual artist because I work across different mediums. Uh, the medium I see has to be in service of the idea, and sometimes the ideas require different mediums. That's a concept. Um, so in that sense, you'll see painting, sculpture, installation, and other kinds of uh, strange explorations. Um, I started school as I wanted to be an engineer, so I started was studying chemistry and physics and realized that I was pretty bad at higher math and wisely made a decision to change my career goals and, and discovered the amazing world of art, which allowed me to be the inventor I wanted to be, but it didn't have to really work in the real world, as long as it worked up here. So. Um, Having that behind me, I've been able to integrate aspects of that early interest in the world of ideas and, and expression that, that make art so varied and, and amazing. Um, so without further ado, let's have the slideshow. And if you want to ask questions afterwards, I'll be happy to try to answer them for you. city that was built in, in the late 70s. Um, it started out, this was the first part of it. Um, at the time, like Jay said, I was, I never had a real studio. I worked either in a garage or an old bedroom. And, and so um, a lot of my friends had studios and I wanted to have one too, so I, I built one. But it was a, a small one. And from, from that piece grew this other um, a fantasy city that was um, allowed you to walk around it um, at head level. I was trying to create a space where the viewer felt like they were six inches tall and could enter into this uh, strange world at night. There were sounds um, of distant traffic, uh, dogs barking. As you walk down the streets, you'd hear people having conversations inside the different rooms. And on the next block over there is actually a disco. <laughs> This, this is a work at the um, Oakland Museum. It's called uh, Aristotle's Cage. Um, again, it's this world, um, this fantasy of the desert. Um, in the foreground, we have this, this trailer behind which we see this acres of, of detritus, um, abandoned cars, oil drums, appliances, you know, things that people drag out of the city into the desert because they, they might need them someday. Yeah. On the horizon, we see the ominous infringement of uh, some kind of industrial plant on the horizon. And in the sky above, we see the skeletal constellations of a, a dog and a, a human chasing across the sky. There's another detail shot of it. 
the, the trailer is actually about 16 inches long and inside of it comes uh, is a sound that comes out of it and the whole place is built in a first perspective scale so that as in only eight feet of space you have what appears to be several miles of desert landscape. This piece was from the early 80s called M13. M13. Uh, this was built at Mount St. Mary's College uh, in an, an exhibition called Architectural Sculpture. It was sponsored by Leica way back when. Um, this piece, you walked up to it, uh, this was built inside the gallery. Um, the door is locked, you'd soon discover when you try it. And if you cup your hands around your face and look into the, into the window, you see pitch blackness. So as you turn to leave, there's another door to your right. And if you go into that door, it leads you down a hallway of gravel. Um, and you mount some stairs at the end of the hallway and come into um, this room here. This thing is seven by seven by seven feet. Um, it's, it was, it's fairly claustrophobic feeling. Uh, there we go. Under the floor, there's the sound of water running. And if you look through there, you can actually see water under the floor. Um, sitting in that charming chase lounge chair is, um, in front of it is a periscope in the wall. And if you look through the periscope, you see the next tableau, which is this kind of bleak uh, <coughs> nightscape of an industrial landscape. Uh, the shadows are moving inside the factory. There's steam coming out of it. The lights are going, and every so often, if you're watching it for a few minutes, you'll see um, a person come up to that lower window and cup their hands around their face and look out at you. And as you know, that's, that's a person at the beginning of the exhibition, and it only works when two people are at the right spot at the right time. So by using mirrors, I was able to shrink the person down to about this tall and put them into the landscape, which is, in fact, a miniature as well, about, about this big. Again, uh, an attempt at transporting the viewer out of the familiar and, and into the strange. This is uh, a work that was shown once in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, um, called The Floating Diner. It was a silent piece. Uh, there's this strange roadside diner hovering over this, this desert landscape. There are hundreds of chicken femurs all over the landscape. Uh, one weekend, the curator came in to do some work after the show had opened, and she brought her, her, her dog along. <laughs> and she went in, and half the bones were gone. That's the floating diner. <laughs> 